Three, two, one. Command has been given. Crank him up. Let's go. When I say I don't know, I don't know. Let's go, baby. Now, the morning drive. Buckle up, everybody. A little bit of this and a little bit of that. It's a game changer. I listen to you guys every single day on my way to work. Well, again, I'm not a doctor, nor do I play one on the radio. You guys are amazing. What are you doing over there? I'm going to the top. The morning drive with Mike Bagley and Pete Pistoni. To the bat balls. Sirius XM NASCAR Radio Channel 90 live and on the air for this Wednesday morning, March 29th, 2023. Mike Bagley here in Del Marvel Studio 1D. We've got Pistol Pete Pistoni in the Paisan Palace in Chicago. Sammy and Davey in Studio 134 of the Beltway Bureau in our nation's capital. We welcome each and every one of you to this Wednesday morning and happy hump day to you, Triple P. Well, good morning, Bagman. Good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday to one and all. Indeed, we are halfway home on the work week. And uh, getting ready for a weekend of racing in Richmond and Bagman getting all tightened up to be heading to our nation's capital later yes. today uh, and be down there live in Studio 134 on Friday Eve. Get it. Yes. <laughs> He's trying. Exactly. We're, we're all packed up, ready to go, except for the backpack. and this Backpack, this backpack. Damn dongle I can't seem to find this morning. Yeah, we're ready to go. Uh, all right, so yesterday... Had to go run a couple of urns, had to go pick up some medicine, and had to go get the car washed, right? Road right. trip, make sure the wheels are nice and tight. And wheels haven't been washed for a while, like last fall. Because every time I'm to wash the car, it rains. Or mm. it's about to rain. So I waited for the rains of Monday to clear. Yesterday, mm -hmm. went out. Man, that coffee's good. Sit um, up. Went over to, and, and here's, here's how I normally do this. I don't have the time to, like, run it through and then me vacuum it and all that stuff. I go to the car wash where they do it all for you. Absolutely. And then I go with the follow-up, like the little tidy up when they're done. And there's always something to be tidied up because I'm just like that. That's how picky I am about the wheels. So I went to this place called White Glove Car Wash. And <laughs> you... You all would have lost it yesterday because I didn't know what I was trapped and I didn't know what to do. So you pull up. And yeah, I like to have the ultimate, please give her the credit card. <whistles> swipe. Here comes the receipt receipt on the dash. Put your car in neutral. And here we go. Yeah. Turn the knob to neutral. And the little thingies that push the car forward to the car wash engaged. And I start mm -hmm. to move forward. Yeah. But I'm not moving forward very well. What do you mean? Because when the wheels started to roll, the emergency brake kicked in. <laughs> the parking brake kicked in. And it's just pushing me through the car wash. And I'm like, oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to pull the, the parking brake release. I can't get it to turn off. <laughs> I'm like hitting like the knob and like nothing's happening. And then the stop, thing stop, is starting stop, to beat. Stop. <laughs> And it's like, I don't know what to do. So I start honking the horn. I'm in the tunnel with the soap help, flying. Help. I'm, I'm like You're honking the like, horn. No. I'm not moving. How like, hard are what's you, happening? How hard are you honking the horn? Like, is it? Uh, is it oh, oh, I'm, no. I'm laying on it now. I'm laying on it. And then, and then I do intermittent, like an SOS Morse code type call. I mean, I'm like. Hey, Frank, so you hear something? Guys running. <laughs> What's going on back there, Frank? Some idiot's just honking his horn to the car wash. <laughs> so, so I go to pull my window down. Well, the, here comes all the soap flying in because the soap's flying all over the place. <laughs> so so the guy's like, hey, hit this, hit this, hit this. I'm like, it's a damn shame. I don't know how to operate my own car. This guy comes in. All right, hit that button. Turn this. Hit OK. Click OK there. And all of a sudden, it went to neutral. Here we go. We're going oh, on through. Man. And I'm like, oh, my God. Here we go. Wow. Gonna rip the <laughs> Go to rip the transmission out of the thing. Good thing anyway. you didn't st stick your head out the, the sunroof. Wasn't that a Final Destination movie? No, well, no I was not going to do the sunroof. No. <laughs> <laughs> so get done, come around, and then they do their thing. And one of the guys doing their, doing their thing was the guy that came to my rescue in the tunnel. So <laughs> when it came time to tip, I gave him a little extra. Thank I you for hope. your service, and thank you for the rescue effort. And... Thank you for and and I got back home and I'm looking around and this thing just looks like it just rolled off the showroom. Wheels are tight and there's no streaks on the windshield and on the on this. 
Found a little bit of stuff on the back in the cargo area, but that was fine. But after mm-hmm. that horror and terror, I still came back and did my thing, though. And let me get here's some car care tips from the bag man. <laughs> so this is what I do when I when, when I do my car. So even after they've done their thing, I'll go back for a little touch up. So if you're looking to get your car tightened up, I suggest get two spray bottles in, in spray bottle. Number one, full of half full of water. Number half one. Of, half full of water. Do it for chest. Half full of white, half full of white vinegar. So 50 parts vinegar, 50, 50 vinegar water mix. Mm-hmm. In the other spray bottle, number half, two, half water, half Murphy's oil soap. Get yourself some microfiber cloths, and then the oh, Murphy's oil soap is for the leather and the dash and all that. The vinegar is for the windows and the plastic covering on the on the like where the speedometer is and all that stuff. You do that, Dashboard, and yeah. the car will smell spectacular. It will. <laughs> I love that, and that's a Chef Scotty. Uh, deal right mm-hmm. there he taught mm-hmm. me that years ago so low inexpensive way and then of course you got to have the bottle of wheel brightener or um tire shine because again you got to make sure those wheels are blinging and those rims are tight can't be riding around with a little brake dust caked up all around the spokes and all that stuff got to get all the stuff off there and then you got to get all that tire shine going on so that's what i did yesterday in addition to packing a lot going on here yesterday the including car runs almost better. getting killed in final destination 21 in the car wash tunnel. I'm serious. The, woman, the, the girl stuck her head out of the sunroof, and then she almost got decapitated. That's the story. It sounded like what you were just telling us. Yeah, that's why I didn't go through the sunroof. Woo. <laughs> Doesn't the car run better when you have it all tightened up like that? Oh. And I, a full tank of gas. Oh, mm. man. It's the best. Mm-mm-mm. You put that, you stick that thing, you put it on watercolors, you put it on cruise control, next thing you know, you're in D.C. It was Final Destination 4 where four. there was the sunroof incident. I got my head out the sunroof. <laughs> <laughs> it's the bag I'm getting man. it cut off now. How do I get this damn thing out of neutral? Hey, I'm still laying on the horn. <laughs> I just <laughs> like soap coming uh, in my car. I just can't. <laughs> I, I can't imagine working. How many times a day that happens to people that work at a car wash, mm-hmm. where someone is over under how many honks you think we're gonna get from people today? Five, six, yeah. like you know what I mean? Well. Like, and then the guy came up with the comment. He's like, "Oh, he says it happens all the time. He says all these new cars. Yeah, uh, I agree." Are, are, all this new stuff on these cars, and I'm like, well, okay, I'm not 89. Well, do you have a? And, you know, you have I'm not buttons? used to driving a horse and buggy, or I'm not yeah. used to driving a Model T. It's like I know this stuff. I'm a tank <laughs> guy. <laughs> let, let the bag man. Here's a tip on cleaning your horse. When you're cleaning that horse's mane, let me give you a tip. Get a bottle of vinegar and oil, and you make a nice salad and, when you're done as well. And lay off the beefaroni, and don't forget that Murphy's. Do you do you have like the buttons, or do you have like a g- actual buttons. gear shift for your for it's your? It's a dial. Ah, uh, see I'm that the I, floor and it's the dial. I it's need the dial I need the, the physical too. like I need to. F- I need the Prindle. Yeah, I, I don't know what the heck that thing's called, but I need that. The gear shift. Yeah, I need it. I, I well, the worst I, one is no. in some of these rental cars, like especially the like GMC terrains and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. You have the buttons are below the radio, and you reach in and you and you put your mm-hmm. finger in and pull full, pull back. To engage, park, and drive, and all that stuff. Because I got uh. in the car one day, and I'm like, okay, where's the button to turn this thing on? And we're, I had Striegel with me, and we're like, where's the button? Where the hell are the buttons? Where mm-hmm. the button? No button. Got no button. Finally found the button to turn the car on. All right. How do we put it in drive? Where's the transmission? Like, and we're crazy. looking all over. We're opening the center console. Mm-hmm. We're looking, and then I've suddenly I looked, I'm like, what's that D for? What? Drive. And then it's like, okay, so I'm Dummy. pushing it. It wouldn't work. So finally had to put the finger and pull back. It took about 10 minutes to Easy. find out, like, where all the mm-hmm. things were to get it just to go. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So me, oh, oh uh, you know, father time over here trying to get adjusted to this new technology in these cars. Listen, the first time I saw one of those dials, I was like, <laughs> what is this? Is this the, the radio? What what channels are these? Not a fan of the dial. I'm not either, but, but you know, I have the edge. Like, you've got the Ford Explorer, so that's kind of the deal. And the other time I went to somewhere, and I got a Prius. It was the only car that was left on the lot. I had no idea how to run that thing. None. None. And that was so weird. You get to the stoplight, and it's like, there's no sound. Is the car? Is are we running? Are we good? What's going on? I opened the door to listen and see if the engine was running, but the engine doesn't run. It turns itself off. Although my car turns itself off too. Does yours do that? Yeah. When you when and, you go to and a then stop? when you release yeah. when you release the pressure off the brake pedal, your foot can still be on the brake, but if you lessen the pressure, then it'll <laughs> fire kicks back, back in. Is yeah. it more fuel? They say it's more fuel efficient. Like, is it just because you're cutting it off for that time and like 
They're able. It's able you're, to. You're it's not idling, oh. and yeah. you're also not well, polluting, it's, and it's you're emissions. not putting yeah. out emissions. It's emissions. Which but I good. always heard the more you start and stop your car, Sam. To your point, the more gas you burn. But I think that's a fallacy. Is that the same thing with like you know? Oh, when you, you know, it's easy like turning on your air conditioner just to like it, it. It costs more to turn it on and get it fired up than it does to actually cool down that. You know what I mean? Like I don't that's, believe that. Now, yeah, if it's off either, for a while, then it has to work longer to get it to the desired cool. Yeah. Point. Right. But it's like, if that's the case, then why is it when the caution flag comes out, all these guys kill their engines? Like, if the caution comes out, engines go silent. Like, yeah. they literally at times have come by me under caution at Pocono in, in the tunnel turn, and it's just, that's all you hear. You don't hear our engines fired up at all. They're coasting through that, and then they fire them back up to make their way around. So they're firing up silent probably about, what, that four or just... five times uh, focus. That's four coming right out of his turn position, not the track. Okay. All right. Okay. Good. What's going on We're up good. there? What's going on in the tunnel turn? Is that the bag man? No, the cars are turned up. Well, speaking of credit cards, so yesterday I had uh, Amy and uh, got the piece trimmed up, and she's got a new system now that I think I told you guys. She doesn't rent the chair from the salon. She actually now works for the salon. So the pay now is completely different. Before, I would just give her cash, right? Put a little tip in there, and you're done. Well, now you have to zell the salon, and then you got to zell or tip Amy separately. So it's like a whole. You know system. why that is? Because they get charged tax on their tips if it goes through the company. Well, there's that, and plus, if you use a debit or credit card now, which I have never done with her before, I, they they pass on the whatever it is three point one four percent to you, the customer, to use a credit card or a debit card. So. I, I mean, I need a Philadelphia lawyer to figure out how to pay my hair. It's like, literally a barbershop world going to the barbershop now, Pete. It's unreal. I go, Amy, what's going on here? How do I do this? It's like, well, do that, do this, do this. Anyway, we got it all squared away. But before, it was just so easy. She would get done. I'd give her the cash. See you in four weeks. Done. Now you got to go through a whole f- system. Cry it out loud. All right. So this is, this is something that I'm, I've been having a challenge with, and it's quite off-putting is the tack on charge or the surcharge. Yeah, and right. this started right before I left Lauderdale and restaurants were doing it. Now I know that they're trying to make back up the money that they were when they were shut down for the pandemic. Yeah. So these weren't like Visa or MasterCard or American Express charges. These were just service charges. There was if you ordered something from a bar, you got a bar service fee of $3 just a tack on the yeah. that that's not gratuity that's not whatever that's just a service fee then you have a dining service fee of like three or five dollars that you order your food and then tax place for the tip here comes the the additional service charge per person by the way um and it started down there so where i am is if you're going to charge an extra five dollars a person Three dollars a person, whatever that is, instead of because everyone's in these pockets, everybody's trying to get in these pockets. Who are you telling? Everybody is in these pockets. Who are you telling? Rather than, rather than have me show me that I'm now having another set of hands go in those pockets to get that service fee, just jack up everything a buck, just go up everything on two dollars, go up everything on three dollars, because it even though you're lumping it in and I'm paying for it. It's not punctuated to me, but like, I'm charging you this. That's an, an amount, that an amount, that an amount. And by the way, here's an extra service amount. that I'm, Just jack up the price of whatever you're paying. Don't go with the service charge. That drives me nuts. And they, it turns me off, too. Just up your prices, but no tack on. The tack on, to me, just leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Well, get this one. I want to talk about clip joints. You know, I've been telling you guys on Saturdays, Michelle and I have gotten to this thing where one week it's her turn, to pick a place one week it's my turn we haven't gone anywhere for the last few weeks because we've had parties and stuff so it's my turn this week and i picked out i think a good place premium seating i call up because they wouldn't take the reservation online usually i use open table and that's what i use to make mm-hmm. reservations not on open table please call the restaurant directly fine i did hi i like a reservation for saturday april 1st what time i don't know 6 30 maybe you know give me time to get that pregame in there at the bar gotta have the pregame and she says to me, well, that's a premium dining time. I said, what does that mean? Five to eight on Saturdays is premium dining. And if you would like to upgrade your seating and have a view, 
that's another premium charge. I go, a view of what? I, 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 I was being honest. I have not been to your establishment before. What am I viewing? It's April. Are you over a lake? Did you move? Are you in the mountains? Because I haven't really, I looked at your website, didn't look that way. They're going to charge you double for when you go and where you sit in the restaurant. Click. Double of what? Whatever. There was like a $5 surcharge for the premium time and then another $5 surcharge for the per person, to your point, for the seating in the restaurant of where you wanted to be. I said, so if I told you that I didn't want the premium seating, I'm curious, where am I, in the kitchen? Is that what I'm doing? Am I washing pots and pans while you're bringing me my arugula salad? Is that, is that what's happening here? It's like flying basic economy. You're exactly. probably in like the middle exactly. seat. But occasionally, Pete, occasionally you get that window or aisle with no one in the middle with you. So you could have wound up gotten a good seat if you would have just let the dice roll a little bit. I, I'll also say the person I spoke with yesterday's attitude didn't really sell what she was trying to sell me. Done then. She was a little oh. uppity. She was a little uppity. Yo, well, yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's how we operate. I said, oh, this is new to me. I've been eating at restaurants my whole life. This is new to me. So, did you really? Did you really say that? I absolutely did. Oh boy, Petey. And then I said, "How do you put this car and drive?" Because I need to get out of here. Help! I started beeping my horn, and then the, the restaurant <laughs> manager <laughs> came over. <laughs> get it? Oh, that's annoying. <laughs> Give that guy his fork. He doesn't have a fork over there. Table twenty. Listen to him. He's honking his horn. Listen. <laughs> 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 I'm just trying to eat. I mean, I, I'm I'm not trying to buy a house. I'm not trying to exactly. do my taxes. I'm not trying to. Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to eat. I like, can understand I'm just the the trying view to get thing. something in my system. I can but understand the, the view if you're in like the hand if you're like the Hancock building and it's like, hey, there's a view I'm of saying. the lake. Like you could sit by the right. glass. Like there's right. something nice to see here. But like, I guess are, I get that. Just yeah. the neighborhood. Are you? Is it like a neighborhood restaurant or was it like downtown no. in Chicago? No, it wasn't downtown. It was in a northern suburb. But, but just, I mean, it wasn't like overlooking like Michigan yeah, to your point like, or anything like that. I've even heard of like places charging for a reservation. And if you don't end up going, then you you're oh, owed yeah. that. Heard, but yes. ooh, which I kind of understand, but even mm-hmm. still, so that's so, that's on another uh, level. I'm looking for a, a new race, a new restaurant, <laughs> new restaurant to eat on uh, Saturday. Her so. Portillos is pretty good. and They don't charge premiums uh, throughout the day. Just no, on, they, just on the tank, I guess. Go to the drive thru line. You might hear this. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, don't forget your shake. More Jardinier, please. More Jardinier. <laughs> Coming up, bottom of the hour. Everybody calm down, <laughs> relax, take a breath. Headline check number one. Coming up, we've got Pistol Beats Power Rankings this morning. Also, we've got a TMD six-pack coming your way. We've got six conversations that we're ready to have with you at 866-BITLANE and on Twitter at SiriusXMNASCAR, hashtag TMD NASCAR. Coming up at 8.50 this morning, we'll give you the calendar. Coming up at 9, we'll visit with our good friend Rodney Childers, Kevin Harvick's crew chief in the NASCAR Cup Series. 9.30, Jerry Freeze of Front Row Motorsports will join us, and we're with you until 11 a.m. Eastern Time here on this Wednesday morning, March 29th, 2023.